just give thanks to the Lord. Just bless his name. He's the covenant keeping God. The faithful and true God. Just bless his name. It's been a wonderful time in his presence these few days. It's been a time of refreshing. The Lord showing forth his love to us in the covenant of grace. Showing us all that Calvary all that Calvary brought to us. That we understanding it and knowing it we might walk in the blessings of it. It's the covenant of life and peace. The covenant that will bring us to the fullness in him. One-sided covenant. All that it will take to bring us to the fullness is all resided in him in Christ. So let's bless his name. Oh, it's a time to rejoice in this covenant of grace. Hallelujah. Oh, we give thanks unto you, our God. We bless your holy name. We exalt you. Who is like unto you, O oh God? Who is like unto you? Among the gods, you are not to be compared. For they are all creatures. The works of your hands, O oh God, you call them into being. But you are God, the self-existing one. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We thank you, Father. We are grateful unto you, God, for another opportunity to hear you. To hear your word. For it is your word that gives us life. Oh, as you taught us in your word, give us this day our daily bread. The word of life. That is the bread we desire. That which will bring us into that estate of life. Even fullness of divine life in you. Thank you, Father. We say, breathe upon your word, you God. Cause our understanding to be fruitful. Grant us the grace to walk in the light of your word. That your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I will just go straight. I'm not going to speak for much, for long. So I don't know how to speak <laughs> for a long time, but I trust that that which the Lord placed in my heart, I will be able to bring it forth, and the Lord will grant us grace, you know, to walk in that which is given unto us at this time. Praise the Lord. Now, I just titled this brief sharing, Hearing and Knowing His Voice. Hearing and Knowing His Voice. We are in that phase in which it's very important that we hear and hear clearly the voice of the Lord. For it is the voice of the Lord that will lead us into victory, fullness of life, and all that the Lord has for us. This voice, to know, we must hear him and hear him clearly. And to know what and how we should live unto him. If we don't hear him like the scripture says, we need to hear, I mean a song, the writer says, we need to hear you, Lord, we need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what shall we do? Wanting you more each day, but it's as your word comes to us. So we need to hear the Lord. There are many voices. Yeah, because of the diverse situations in the world, there are many voices. We are hearing so many things, and people are getting confused. Even amongst uh, the Christians and amongst even brethren. You know, so much confusion. 
but depends on who you are hearing and whose word you are walking by. So we need to hear him at this time. Hear clearly, know exactly what the Lord is saying to us so that we will walk into victory in the name of Jesus. We'll just look at two passages. They are familiar passages, but we'll just look at them and pick something from them. John 10, 1 to 5. John chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enter not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the potter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name, and leaded them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow but we flee from him, for they know not the voice of the stranger. They know not the voice of the stranger. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We look at um, Matthew 13, which talks about the parable of the sower. It's a long passage, but we'll go through for the benefits of the youths also, and we'll see the approach the Lord wants to take us through as regards hearing and knowing his voice. Matthew 13, 1 to 9, and then the interpretation that is 18 to 23. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll try to read fast. So that 1 to 9, Matthew 13. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that it went, he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of it. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He uh, who had ears to hear, let him hear. Let's take note of that phrase. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. 18 to 23. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth the seed unto, into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy received it. Yet had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, 
By and by, he is offended. He also, he also that received seed among the tongues is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the world and he became and he became it unfruitful. But he that received he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundred whole fold, some sixty, some thirty. Praise the Lord. So we just have these two passages before us as we share on this uh, topic, hearing and knowing the voice of the Lord. Now, as I meditated on it, it's, you know, the situation amongst us is, you know, the tendency, you know, of being influenced, you know, by what is happening around us. But as children of God, as people who walk with the Lord, we cannot draw strength from without, but rather from the word of the Lord. The word of God is that which will position us at any given time, in any situation, under any circumstance. It is the word of the Lord. It is the word of the Lord, and it is critical at this time that we go back to the word of the Lord to know what the Lord says to us or speaks to us at any given time. For it is by that we can have victory. We can face any situation. You know, and when we talk about the word of the Lord, now, there are two primary sources of the word of the Lord. I mean, two sources of the word of the Lord. The primary one is the scripture. The scripture, we may not know all of the scriptures, but when we come before the Lord under any challenges, any challenge, we are able to hear the voice of the Lord who that will lead us to the scripture that is relevant to that situation. And by it, we are able to you know, handle that situation or challenge or have understanding how to move on. Praise the Lord. So the word of God is very important. Then you have the secondary um, prophecy, we'll call it primary prophecy, the word of the Lord and the secondary prophecy, which has to do with witnesses, which has to do with the visions and the trances, you know, the word of the Lord that comes to us. But it must be judged by the written word. You know, with time, you know, looking back at the few months ago, back in Nigeria, with the situation of uh, the uh, election. So many words, prophecies here and there. You know, and there's so much confusion there. And the church being led by that, but not looking back, what is the Lord saying? What? Because everything that has to do with man's victory, living uh, victoriously, whatever it is that pertains to man, it's in the scripture. It is there. The Lord has made all things as it were ready. Prepare the ground before man was brought into the scene. Before man was brought into the scene, the Lord knew what would be the challenge before this man and how man would go. He made provisions. So whatever it is, it is there in the word of the Lord. But when we depend so much on the secondary prophecy, because, because we, which is what, you know, a lot of people depend upon. You want to hear, oh, what is the Lord saying? He said, <laughs> this just comes to my mind. My daughter will always laugh when she hears that. You know, when they say you had a vision, a dream, you say, okay, is there a witness? I have a revelation. She said, no, it's not a revelation. It's a dream. Just tell the dream. Then when it's judged, we know if it's from the Lord. But we just say, oh, I have a revelation. So we have the prophets all over the place. 
who are there to prophesy and tell you what they saw. But does it align with the word of the Lord? And this is the time we must go back to the word of the Lord. We must hear. That's weird. Because again and again, you hear the, the John passage said, my sheep hear. Hear, ability, that capacity to hear and understand. It's not the word coming in and going out. We all are hearing, but I'm sure at the end of uh, the meeting today, when if two, three people are asked to share what you heard, you wonder sometimes whether they're all in the same meeting. That's the truth. Because one we hear a longer line, another, you know, so we hear differently. But then, the word of the Lord comes, we must hear and discern. This is what the Lord is saying. Because we must hear with understanding if we are to walk with the Lord, if we are to act upon what the Lord has spoken to us. Because when the Lord speaks to us, it's not just to give us words, to just, like uh, the imagined church, there's so much, you know, people could just run with one word, they hear, oh, this is a new thing, and get excited. No, it's the life. The words that come is to produce life. That is it. So we must hear aright. And that's why it must be the word of the Lord. No, like the burial Christians, they heard, but they went to look at the word so that they can live by that word. So this is the time we must hear the Lord, and it is the word. The prophecies, the dreams, the visions, they will come, but we must go. Where is it in the word? And what does the Lord say about this that has come as a revelation, as we'll call it? Does it align with the word of God, does it lead me more into God? Because that is the essence of every word that comes from the Lord. It's to transform us, to make us more like Christ, to bring, make us grow in him, the attributes, because that is the final estate we are going in. We are not just going to be, we are going to, we say we are seated in the heavenly places to be doing what? We are to be rulers. But we must rule as Christ. And that is why the Lord is working upon us. To cause us to be Christ indeed. His nature to be in us. But if we don't hear aright and be able to respond appropriately, then we cannot grow into that fullness which the Lord is eager for us to come into. We must hear aright. And this is the time. Because there's so much going on. We must not be confused like the others. But as we fellowship with the Lord, because the hearing and knowing God talks about a level of intimacy. Because as we fellowship with him, as we come into his word, he reveals himself to us. And we're able to dance, this, this, and this is the word of the Lord. This is the Lord speaking to me because we are able to go again and again, look at it, compare what I've received as an inward impression, as, you know, the Spirit's ministering to me, does it, is it in line with the word of God? We must judge by the word of the Lord or else we will, we will go astray. These are not the days we must we have time to waste because there's so much the Lord wants to impact upon us. Like the scripture says, the time is short. The time is short. But then there must be a people who are hearing him and running with him. Praise the Lord. So we must hear, because hearing implies that we understand. You hear, you understand what's the word that has come to you. That so much has come to us today. And over uh, since Wednesday, the Lord has been ministering to us from his word. You know, causing us to know who we are and what the Lord has made available to us the covenant of grace, the blessings, the benefits, they are there. We are to walk in the reality of it. That is what the Lord is causing us to know. Because we must walk in dominion. We must walk 
and bring forth the glory of God. And it is, it's, it's, the, it's our life, the lifestyle we are to take upon. Like the Lord is ministering to us, teaching us how to declare these things in faith so that we live in the reality of it. Praise the Lord. So we must hear with understanding. And as we have said, hearing the word of the Lord, you know, he expects us to respond. That's why we must hear a right so that we can uh, respond positively in obedience, walk in the light of that which he has uh, shown unto us. Praise the Lord. Now, the, in looking at the Matthew passage, you know, the level, you know, we hear at different levels, like we have said. At the time, we all trying to compare notes of all we have uh, received. Like I said a few times, it's like, were we all under the same uh, um, teaching? Because the level at which you receive the word of the Lord, to that level you will respond. And looking at that um, Matthew 13 passage, we see that there are four levels there. More often we look at it from the heart's level in relation to the preparedness of the heart to receive the word and to interact with the word. Praise the Lord. But we look at it from this, the aspect of hearing. And we have the first level, hearing without understanding. You are just there here. You know this. the ministry of the word is going, but you have no understanding at all of what is going on. That's the level. There are many who could, could be in a meeting. You say, oh, this was a beautiful meeting. Oh, we had church, as some will say. But so, okay, what was ministered? It's like, it was just beautiful. <laughs> is that all you are taking home? How does that impact you? How does that change you? How is that going to influence your tomorrow? Praise the Lord. Then we have those who hear with no depth in understanding. They could say, you could say, okay, we talked about the covenant grace, the covenant of grace, and the, the benefits, okay, how are you going to apply this to your life? Depends on how the level at which you understand what has been ministered. Then we have the third level, those who hear with understanding, but are not willing to pay the price, take up the responsibility that is called for. A word has come, going to make demand upon you. You love the word. Oh, you love that. Oh, you, you, you appreciate it, but it's like, calm, I'm not, <laughs> not too sure if I'll be able to yield to all the demands of that word that has come. That's another level. And then you have the third, the fourth level, those who hear with understand, understanding and are ready, willing, eager to give up and to take in the life of consecration. So those are the four levels of hearing. And this takes place in every meeting. At any time, the word of the Lord comes to you, irrespective of your, your growth in the Lord, your walk with the Lord. Anytime the word of the Lord comes to you, these four levels are before you. These four levels are before you. Anytime you receive or the word of the Lord comes to you, you hear the word of the Lord. Sometimes you respond to it. Sometimes you don't have much understanding. Sometimes you are so excited, you want to go all the way, but you begin to have some consideration. Oh, this is going to make so much demand upon me. Will I be able to give up this? Give up this? Then at other times, no, I want to go all the way. I know what is at stake. The vision is before me. Whatever it takes, I will give up and give to the Lord. I will take off my cross. I will follow him. 
No. Any time there is a word from the presence of the Lord, these four levels are before you. That is the truth. Because at some times when some words come, we are so eager, we go all the way. When others come with much demand, we begin to, you know, watch, examine, and sometimes we compare ourselves with ourselves, like the scripture says, and act as fools. We shouldn't be fools comparing ourselves because you look at your brother, look at your sister, it's like, ah, they are not making all these uh, sacrifices. Should I? Praise the Lord. And this sometimes is common among the youths. You know, it's like you are making every effort. Probably another brother or another youth here is like, ah, are you the only one? Take it hmm? gently. Or sometimes you look at the other person, he's not, why am I the only one fasting and fasting? Doing all the prayers I, you, you, you discuss with others. You see, as though they are just taking it gently. It's like, why am I? We are all is the same race. We are no. Praise the Lord. So we see there are these four levels, and it all depends on your hearing. What you have heard, do you have understanding? Do you know the implication? And are you ready to go all the way with the Lord? May the Lord grant us help that when his word comes to us. We should look at it. We should hold on to it. We should believe his word. Praise the Lord. And I will say this now again, that the level at which you receive the word of the Lord also determines your lifestyle. It determines your lifestyle. If you are one that received the word of the Lord, and don't have much understanding, you will live a casual life. Even if you are within, amongst the brethren, you don't have deep understanding and you are not making effort. You think things are uh, casual. You just be satisfied with the Lord blessing you. The Lord making things, just the born again experience. The Lord is there for you. You pray, the Lord answers you. You have one challenge, the Lord attends to you as it were. Or you are on the receiving end. But the Lord also needs you. Just as you have needs, the Lord has needs and needs us to partner with him to bring forth his glory. And it's as he walks upon our lives and changes us to become like him before the glory can come forth. So if we are casual in our responses to the Lord, it's going to affect our lifestyle, the way we pray, our devotions, our associations, and all the rest and what we listen to, particularly this uh, era of social uh, media. So much is going on there, and you keep drawing inspiration from there and being influenced and affected by that. But if you are one that hears, and you are serious, you, you give yourself that is here with understanding, you find out that you will love the word of the Lord that comes to you, and you want to yield yourself. But if you are at the third level, you have understanding. But the case of this world, like it says in the passage there, chokes. That is a situation where you are not ready to make all the sacrifices, consecrated living, is what will take us all through. And if we don't come to that stage where we give our all to the Lord, we find out that our hearing the Lord and going all the way with the Lord no, will not achieve God's purpose for us. So let's receive the word of the Lord. There is grace from the Lord. We have known that it is not all like the scripture says, it's not by power, nor by might, but by the spirit. God, Jesus is our completion. But all he requires of us, hear and respond to him. And that which is required to bring about the change and to be consistent, there will be the supply from the presence of the Lord. 
So let us hear with understanding. Let us give attention to what we hear. Praise the Lord. Now, how do we improve our hearing? Let's look at um, Hebrews 4, 1 and 2. It says, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Praise the Lord. The word preached must be mixed with faith. Amen. We must believe the word of the Lord that comes to us. But how do we show that we believe the word? Because we all hear the word, we say we believe the word. What is the proof that we believe the word of the Lord that comes to us. One, we need to look again at the word preached to us to have an in-depth understanding. So there must be a going back to the word. It has come. You are excited. You receive the word. You believe this is the word of the Lord. But you must go back and before the Lord, look into this word again. Look into the word again. Because you believe that what you want to have understanding of it. What is the Lord saying? What does he expect me to do with this word that he has brought forth? So we must look again at the word. We must believe the word that it is his word. If it's the word that is preached from the scriptures, it is the word. There are so many words that come from when people stand to minister. But that which is from the primary prophecy. We must hold on to it. It is the word of the Lord. He will not break his word. Praise the Lord. And then we take the word back to him in the place of prayer. To take the word to pray. Look unto God. This word that have come, Lord, breathe upon me. Give me understanding. Grant me grace to walk in the light of it. So, that is a show that you have faith in this word. You want this word yes. to become flesh in yes. you. So you are taking it back to the Lord in the place of prayer. Holding on to him. Because he will expand it further. He will give you the in-depth understanding. And they will find grace to want to walk in the light of that word that has come. Praise the Lord. Then, fourthly, we'll be obedient. You act upon the word. Now we have received the word concerning the grace covenant, the benefits to proclaim this word, to speak it forth over our lives, declare it again and again. We are to be obedient to this word. As we continue, we will see the life as it were in that word. Because he said the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are to produce life, the life of God in you. So as we speak this word over ourselves, declaring what the Lord has declared concerning us, standing in agreement with that word that this is the word of the Lord and this is what he wants, how he wants me to live my life, a victorious life. And you continue to pronounce, proclaim this word. You will enjoy that word. That word will become life in you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So this is how we can prove we have faith in that word that has come. By believing the word, bringing it again before the Lord in the place of prayer, and acting upon the word of the Lord. Because the word is to bring a change, transforming us from one degree of glory to another. Amen. We have not seen the changes. We stay upon him. We still upon the world. The world will impact us. Because there's life in the word of God. It is God. The word became flesh. That word is the life of God. And we have received him. The spirit of Christ is in us. And as we continue to minister to him. By his word. Into our lives. We will see our lives being transformed. Praise the Lord. Because here it says they did not enter 
into, praise the Lord. The, what did not profit them? It did not profit them. That means they did not enter the good of the world. They did not enter, they did not realize the purpose of that word that was ministered to them. These words that have come to us is to profit us. The ultimate of this word, the Lord is walking upon us, is to walk into us the attributes of God, of wisdom, of love, of power. These are realities that we are to come into as we hear the word of the Lord, as we respond to him. Praise the Lord. So let's know that the word is to accomplish something in our lives each time it comes. And so when we are not seeing changes, we are to look at ourselves, am I responding appropriately to this word? Did I hear and hear aright? Am I hearing? Physically, it goes into the ear. Yes, but do I hear with understanding such that I'm walking in the light of the word that has come? Praise the Lord. So if we are not experiencing to that dimension, is to go back to the Lord with this word again and trust him that he will do a thing in our lives as he causes us to understand this word. And then we yield to him. We will see the changes. We will see the growth. We will see the victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you, if you remember the, the churches, the letters to the churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, each of the churches, after the Lord has assessed them, spoken to them of the areas where they are failing, at the end, he said, he who has ear, let him hear. He's spoken to the churches. It's some, the, words have been, the letters have been read, but the individuals are expected to respond, to hear, to hear with understanding. So that they can, they, you know, each one of them have the promise. There's a promise for them, for each one who overcome. In other words, hearing the word, where you need to repent, where you need to, to turn away from the, uh, from, from uh, 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 um, where you need to repent, where you need to, to, to give up. Each of these ones, there is a promise attached. In other words, as you respond to this word, you hear it with understanding, and you respond to the word, and you overcome. Because it says, he that overcome, as regards the things that the Lord has listed before, according to the church, uh, the letter has been written to the particular church. If you overcome, you can only overcome when you have heard and responded. Then you will overcome. Then the promise is yours. It's granted to you. It's a level of life that you attain each time you overcome. But you must hear. He said, he who has ears, let him what? Hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Lord is constantly speaking. His word is there. If we go to the word, the Holy Spirit will open it up to us. He will grant us understanding. So let's begin to, we have already developed a hearing hearing the Lord, but we need to hear him more this time. We need to give attention to what we are hearing, his words that is coming to us, because that is what is going to keep us in the track. That is what is going to keep our focus upon him, the vision before us, his word. Whatever word come at any time, we must go back to the scriptures. Does it tally with what the Lord is uh, is in the word of the Lord and what he has revealed to us at this time that he's doing, then we give ourselves to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, we need to look at it because there's so much coming on. When I hear brethren speak sometimes more on the secondary prophecy carried away, it's, where is the word of the Lord? Where is the word of the Lord? Yes, like I said, we may not all know. You may not know so much, or you know so much, but the Lord is constantly speaking, but it's tallies with his word. 
So when there's, you don't have much understanding, you go back to the Lord. You go to the Word. Don't run with that which you don't have understanding in. But when the Lord gives you understanding, stay upon it. Stay upon it. The Lord will continue to breathe upon it. And then there will be that light transforming the walk that will take place in our lives. Praise the Lord. So let's hold on to the Lord because this hearing thing and knowing the Lord, there must be that interaction. Yes, we have our times, prayer time, your quiet time, but we need to do, how will I put it now? There needs to be a deliberate setting out time to seek him. To seek him because the Lord is opening up himself, as it were, to us at the season. And we must be ready to receive all so that we can be all of that which is seen unto us in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I'll stop there. Let's just give thanks to him for the ability, the grace to hear his word. It's a privilege that we can hear his word, but we need in-depth understanding at this time so that we will be able to walk with sure and steady feet in the name of Jesus. So just give thanks to the Lord. Ask the Lord for grace to enable you to hear perfectly well. Hear with such an understanding that you are willing to give up where you need to give up, to yield to him where you need to yield to him. You are ready to be obedient to the word that comes to you at all times. That any time the word of the Lord comes to you, you will be at this fourth level of hearing. That you will be at the fourth level of hearing each time his word comes to you. Either in fellowship or in your private devotion. But that you will be at this fourth level hearing him and understanding him. Now, when the words come, you will not set it aside, but you look again and again. You look again and again, and he will yet speak further in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We rejoice before you, for you are a true and faithful God. Thank you, O oh God, because you are constantly speaking to your own. For you say your sheep hear your voice. They know your voice. Yes. Because, Lord God Almighty, you have brought us into your warm embrace. And by your spirit, you are causing us to know your, know your voice. We pray in the name of Jesus that all that you have ministered unto us and will yet minister unto us. As we go on with you, we ask, O oh God, for in-depth understanding in the name of Jesus. And we ask, O oh God, that in understanding, O oh God, we will willingly give ourselves unto you. That is the full show of understanding. That because we have understood you, when we know who you are, the God of integrity, that we will willingly yield ourselves unto you. Thank you, Father. We we'll bless your name. We exalt you. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.